you just got access to Power BI. Now what? Watch this video to understand how to use the Power BI service to get most out of the reports that are shared with you. This video is perfect for the business users and managers who have been given access to Power BI service and just feeling overwhelmed with all the buttons and bells and whistles that you see on the screen. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what Power BI service is, how to use the reports that are shared with you, how to set up filters and interactions on the report so that you can see what you want, how to take the data that is shown in the report and maybe use Excel to do your own analysis on top, how to share those reports in your upcoming presentations or Teams meetings, and some of my best tips and tricks. Let's get in. To access the Power BI service, we go to app.powerbi.com website. Let's log into our account here. Once you get into Power BI service, you will enter this page that usually shows your recent items underneath here. It will also show some recommended visualizations and reports. I never really look at those things. Once you are here, you can directly use the search bar to navigate to any part of the Power BI service. But more commonly, what we do is click on the browse area so that we can get into some of our reports. So when you go into browse, you will see all your recently accessed reports here, as well as anything that is shared with you. If you favorited any items so that you can quickly access them, they will appear in the favorites area here. Let's go to the shared with me and open one of the reports that is shared with me. As there are a lot of reports here, I can use the column here shared and sort it so that I can see what is shared with me recently. Let's open this report so that we can understand how to use Power BI service to read a report and understand what is going on in our business. You might be wondering how this is different from other kinds of Power BI. Power BI has a desktop application called Power BI Desktop, which is primarily used by creators of the report. So for example, I am personally a creator of the report. I use Power BI to build the reports but someone else might be actually reading that report. So once we open the report in Power BI service, the report will be laid out here, along with if the report has multiple pages, they will all be listed here. So for example, right now, I am on the report page of this report. Here, while you are looking at the report, the first thing that you may want to understand is how to interact or talk to this report. Power BI is a highly visual medium. That means anything that you see, you can click and touch this. So if I want to know more about Raspberry Choco, I can click on that and instantly I can see the uh, sales trend for that particular product, boxes trend, shipments trend, as well as top salespeople for that product. Many times, depending on how the report is designed, your report may also have some sort of visual filters or slicers. So for example, here I have got a date slicer, which I can slide down or enter a specific date to see the data just for that window. Right now we are seeing all the data. I'm just gonna slide this down a little bit and we have successfully reduced the data from Jan to May of 2024. Let's say you have looked at this report and you understood what you want. Now you want to reset this back to the original way. You can use the reset button that is here to reset all the interactions and filters that you have applied. So let's tap on that and it's gonna give me a message and when I reset, I get back to my original report. Now here is a pro trick that will help you when you're working with Power BI reports. Let's say you want to see what is the impact or what is the trend for Raspberry Choco as well as Mint Chip Choco. You can select the first one, hold down the control key and select the second one. You can use this control technique with many other visuals as well. So for example, here I am selecting salespersons that I want to analyze just by holding control. I've selected multiple people and I can see how their trends are. Anytime you select anything, all the other visuals will respond to that interaction. You can also learn more about this data by pointing your mouse or finger on it and see the tooltip. So for example, here I'm seeing orange choco the total boxes is this, but the highlighted portion is that much. This is really helpful to see 
what is the representation of your interaction against all the data. There is also a more powerful way to filter your data in Power BI and that is the filter panel that you see on the side. Usually this is collapsed but let's expand this. Using the filter panel we can set up our own filters on the data. So let's say I'm looking at this box as per product chart and I would like to add a specific filter that kind of says maybe I don't want to see everything I just want to see anything where the boxes per product is about 75k or more so only these ones are what I want to see all the ones above so here you can see that sum of boxes is all I can kind of say it should be greater than and then type 75,000 I can apply the filter and bingo our chart is now customized this is a great way to kind of personalize the reports to your specific requirements. Power BI also tells you a visual has been filtered when you hover on these three lines. Here it is telling me filters and slicers affecting this visual and it is telling us that this is a filter that has been applied. When you no longer want that filter, you can select the visual again, go to the filter panel and use this clear button to clear away the filter. Another common thing that you may want to do when you're looking at reports like this is change the way the sorting is done. So for example, in this visual again, you can see that the data has been sorted in descending order. Maybe we want to see that in alphabetical order. To do this, you want to click on these three dots, go to sort axis and select the different item that you want to sort on. So you can either change the descending to ascending order for this, that will flip the chart or we can go to sort axis and select the product column so that we can see the products listed alphabetically. On each visual that you are seeing in the report, whether they are line charts or pie charts or tables, you usually find a focus mode button. Using this focus mode, you can kind of zoom in just into that visual. So let's focus on this trend and I can see just the trend on my page clearly so that I can use that to further understand my data or maybe ask extra questions to Power BI. So for example, when I'm looking at this, let's say I want to know what happened here. There is a big drop of values. What you can do is you can right click on this number here and then you can say analyze and ask Power BI to explain the decrease. This is a great way to add further insights that are not part of your original data. Because many times a report creator views this information from one perspective, but you as a decision maker or consumer of the report might have a different requirement. Power BI uses a little bit of AI and pattern matching to come up with all the reasons why the sales have dropped. Of course, because it uses AI, sometimes these results may not make sense or completely correct. When you are done with the focus mode, you can click on the back to report button here to jump back to the full report. Let's say you like this pie chart, but you want to have this as part of your upcoming email or a Word document or a presentation. You can use this copy button on any of the images or visuals that show up and copy this. Copy, go into Word, Control V to paste. It's going to paste the image as well as a link to open in Power BI so that when your colleague sees this, she can tap on that and jump into the report. There is also another way to directly embed this interactive report or just the visual into PowerPoint. I'll talk about that towards the end of this video. If your report has multiple pages, you can click on the other pages just to navigate there. This is a made up report, so the other page is also exactly similar, but we can click on that to see that. Now let me share one more pro trick to make your life really simple when working with your reports in Power BI. Let's say every day or every week you see this report and you make certain filters or interactions. Maybe you select raspberry choco, choco coated and mint chip choco, and this is the view that you want to see. But every time you come back, it shows the full report. What you can do is after you make your selection, you can create a personal bookmark. So I'm gonna call this as my products and save it. In fact, I can even make it the default view, but I'm just gonna save this. And tomorrow when I come to this report, I can click on these personal bookmarks, click on my product selected, 
so that I can refer to that particular interaction directly without having to manually select all of those things again. This works very well, not just for individual things, but even when you have combinations. So for example, a specific date filter along with interactions and something else, you can do it like that as well. One of the common things that we like to do when we are looking at Power BI reports or literally any other reports is get this data out so we could do our own analysis. Power BI offers two powerful ways of doing this. Let's say I'm looking at this chart and I just want to get that data so I can do some further analysis in Excel. I can click on these three dots and use the export data option so that I can get the underlying data. This is going to give you further options depending on how your Power BI is set up. I'm just going to select summarize data and use the Excel SX file and export. And when you open that data in Excel, you will see all the months and years and what is the amount values for each month. There is also a better, faster and more powerful way of analyzing this data in Excel called Analyze in Excel. I'll talk more about that in an upcoming video. Another thing that you may want to do, especially when you're looking at reports like this is you may want to export the whole report as a PDF so that you can share it without having to edit or manipulate anything. This is really simple. You click on the export button and there we have the PDF option. I'll also mention how to use the PowerPoint option a bit later, but for now let's use PDF. So you can click on the PDF and you can set whether you want to see current values or default values and you can kind of change it to either current page or all pages. I'm just going to say only current page and export. And there is our PDF. The only difference between the PDF and your online version is this is not interactive. So it's just presents a snapshot in time. Let's talk about how to take this Power BI report and make it part of your upcoming presentation. For this, you want to click on the share button and you can do one of the two things. You can copy the link or you can directly tap on the PowerPoint button. I'm just going to copy this link. By the way, you can use the same link in Outlook, Teams and other places as well. We are just going to use PowerPoint. Now let's jump into PowerPoint. Here I have got a blank presentation and we are going to go into insert and look for the Power BI button. If you don't have this, that means your IT has disabled this for whatever reason. So you may want to check with them. But once you find the Power BI button, tap on that and paste the link that you have copied here. Click on insert and there is our report. Now the beautiful thing with this is this is completely interactive. So here in PowerPoint itself, I can talk to the data. What more? Even when you're presenting, you can do the interactions. So this is really helpful for an upcoming board meeting or that discussion with stakeholders. Now that you know how to use a single Power BI report in Power BI service, let's spend a minute or two to quickly understand what else is there on the Power BI service. So if you remember, we started our day with the home ribbon and we went into browse so that we can browse for the reports. Apart from Power BI reports, you can also see occasionally people have shared with you a dashboard or sometimes an entire workspace or other data sets. The difference between a report and a dashboard is a dashboard is just collection of various things from different reports. So here is a dashboard. It has two of the visuals from our original report. I have pinned those visuals into the dashboard so I can just see these two and maybe I can take something else from some other report and put it here as well. Let's say you open this report every day. Instead of going through the screens all the time, you can create a favorite for this report so that it appears in the favorites tab for you right away. This way you don't have to browse through a huge pile of reports and dashboards and workspaces to find out that perfect report. Any of the reports or dashboards that we recently accessed will also be shown underneath here so you can jump into that quickly. I'm going to share one more pro trick and this is something that I use for pretty much anything online, not just Power BI. Let's say I am looking at this report and I like to get here every day. Instead of using favorites, you can also create a bookmark in your browser. So I'm going to add this as a bookmark and let's name this as my sales report and set it up as a bookmark. 
this way this report is now saved into my browser as a bookmark i don't even have to log in and go there and anything i can straight away let me just activate the bookmarks toolbar and here is my sales report i can straight away tap on that bookmark and it would automatically load that report assuming i'm logged in while all of this is good sometimes you might feel like that report or the number quite doesn't make sense in such cases you can get in touch with the people that are building this report by two ways one you can share the report and you can jump into teams and have a discussion with the persons or the teams responsible for this or two you can also leave a comment you can tap on this comment you can kind of at mention any of the other people in your organization that work on this and kind of say hey the total sales here doesn't make sense or whatever else is wrong i hope now you have become confident on how to use power bi service if you do have any other questions on power bi service or how to work with your reports in power bi leave a comment below and if you want to know how to build reports like this check out this tutorial that shows up on my channel i wish you all the best in your power bi journey and if you enjoyed this video so far give it a like and share it with some of your colleagues i'll catch you out there bye